Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode number 31 of Sir Kevin Says. We are with JD Perez. What's up, man? What up, bro? You chilling? Chilling, man. We're here, man. We're doing it. Welcome. Windy outside. Inland Empire is a little bit of a drive for yeah. us LA folks. So yeah. uh, without traffic, it's cool, though. Yeah. I think with traffic, is, uh, it's a little bit of a hassle. But yeah, it's windy today, bro. It is, man. You'll probably hear the wind uh, shushing. Hopefully not. Time time, We're going to edit that out yeah. somehow. <laughs> but you ready? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. This is a Kevin's request, by the yeah, way. Yeah, it is, is uh... at my request. But <laughs> all right. One, two, a one, two, three, four. I almost spilled my Inca Cola, bro. That was dangerous. So that little uh, piece or rhythmic what, what, rhythmic part, what would you call that? Like a cadence? Yeah. Something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, JD showed that to me, man, like maybe four years ago. I think so. From yeah. Douglas Guevara. Is that his name? Douglas Guevara. Guevara. From Grupo. It was him and, and a couple of other people from uh, Grupo, Grupo Nietzsche. Nietzsche. Yeah. Uh, and they were just doing, you know. Probably messing around the studio and came up with a with a, but I I've heard that before somewhere else. I, I don't to. think that's the uh, it's that's typical. Where, yeah. yeah, Douglas was a, a genius. I mean, passed away a couple years ago, but I mean, it's it's one of the best uh, um, percussionists I've I've seen. Yeah, killer, killer dude. Yeah. Well, everybody, welcome JD Perez to the show. It's episode thirty one, like we said. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> we here. Juan David Perez. Known as JD is a Los Angeles bass drummer and percussionist originally from Cartagena de Indias, Colombia. Moving to the U.S. at a very young age, J.D. became exposed to a broad spectrum of genres such as pop, funk, Latin, R&B, and everything in between. J.D. attended Musicians Institute and Cornell School of Contemporary Music in which he got his bachelor's degree That's in right. drum performance. J.D. has worked with a wide range of artists and on various productions such as the Latin AMAs, America's Got Talent, the Emmy's Governor's Ball, Kanye West's Sunday Service, Big Sean, and many others. Well, welcome, bro. Thanks, man. Dude, how's it going, man? Everything's going uh, crazy right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, who hasn't? I mean, who mm -hmm. hasn't been going, uh, feeling a little weird with this, with this whole pandemic, trying to, uh, trying to just do life mm -hmm. as as a freelance musician? But uh, we're here. We have uh, air in our lungs, and we're healthy. So yeah, that's all we could uh, hope for. So. Yeah, I feel like as of late, I've been asking everybody, "What have you been up to since March?" Yeah, because that's kind of been where everything started. So what have you been doing since that time? Um, so definitely in the studio a lot more. Mm -hmm. uh, just doing myself, getting better at recording, yeah. and uh, and just doing things that I I normally wouldn't have time to do uh, when I'm just you know just about you know what I'm saying like practicing a lot. Yeah. I haven't practiced this much since school days. School, yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's been a it's been a, a, a relief in that sense. But you know, just hoping to get back out there with uh, with everybody, my my uh, percussion brothers and and sisters, and yeah, uh, and and drummers, and and it's just it's it's been a whirlwind. But uh, yeah, we're here, bro. Yeah, we're here. That's cool, man. You're originally from Colombia. Mm -hmm. How'd you make your way over here? How'd that happen? Uh, just a little observation. You've had a couple of Colombians in here already. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like this is we're we're gonna paint this whole place uh, <laughs> yellow, blue, and red, bro. Because uh, you had Neza, who's yeah. that? You told me she's, she's half, part Colombian. Right? Yep. Uh, and then Justo. Yeah. Well, Justo and I have known each other for a long time, man. It's uh it's a funny story how me and Justo met. So him and my dad had already been working forever. Um, and then when I got here, uh. Spanish is my first language, mm -hmm. so you know I had I didn't know a lick of English, and uh, it, it was just you know, it was new to me, just this whole world. So uh, so when I got here, I remember who still came to a house where we were at. I forgot, uh, and he gave me a uh, a leap pad learning system. You know what those are? It's like this little book, uh, and it's interactive, and it's like a picture of frogs, and like you click on them with this with some pen, and and that's how I learned English for wow. like so. Like you know, Husto has been uh, yeah a, a big influence in my life for for uh, yeah since a very long time. So Man. I'm glad you guys got together and, yeah. and and got to you know get it done. And and I mean, a, 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 just a, a master of knowledge that yeah. guy. So. I mean, amazing musician, but even more of an amazing person. Oh man, and uh, that's that's the main thing, bro. Yeah. That's the main thing about people like Husto and 
and, uh, and and guys that have done it for a long time. It's just mm-hmm. like you see the uh, there's no ego. It's just you know them and 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 you and they see you and and, and it's it's nothing more than that. So, right. Right. Uh, yeah, for sure. But yeah, I mean to answer your question uh, from uh, Cartagena, Colombia, mm-hmm. uh, I was I was born there and then I moved to the capital uh, Bogota for a, for a bit and I would move back and forth because my grandparents were living down there and and uh, and everything and. Um, and in a small town, I remember my, uh, my, my favorite childhood memories were definitely in a small town, like two hours from Cartagena called mm-hmm. Maria La Baja, which is like, like there's one, uh, uh, paved road. Everything else is like straight <laughs> up there. So like, you know how Justo kind of told you, oh, like the houses over there, it had no like running water and, this yep. and that. that's how a lot of towns are. And we're from the same region in the, in the Northern coast of Colombia. Okay. Um, so yeah, it, it's a lot. And you see so many things, bro. There's so much need in those places. And, uh, and to me, like, it's just like, it's just raw. You know what I'm saying? Everything is, I mean, the food, everything is organic. Yeah. You know, it's my grandpa, uh, used to wake up early in the morning and, and go to tents to some, uh, he had two, uh, fincas, we call them ranches, I guess okay. you would say. Got you. Uh, one of them had like, you know, all, um, vegetables and all this stuff. And the other one was like a, like a milk farm. Uh, so we'd go there and we'll literally drink milk out, like out of the cow, like wow. unpasteurized, like just let's go, bro. <laughs> Never got sick, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, so it's like I grew up in that and it just kind of made me, uh, it, it like superficial stuff to me, it doesn't really mean anything because of, you know, the the way I grew up with my 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 grandparents. Sure. And, 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 and at the time, my dad was traveling all the time and. Um, it was uh, it was a lot of time with them that I, that I remember. So yeah, so in those towns, man, and, and it, it's just there's a lot of need. There's kids that are uh, really um, in need of affection, and mm. and they're always out in the street and stuff like that. And uh, so like one thing that I, I really want to do, like you know, when I get the opportunity, is go back and and uh, and open up a school, bro. There's so much talent there. Yeah, it's just I remember um, when I was a, a little kid, there was this. There was this guy that used to sell like it's called butifarras, which is like little like meat, uh, I don't know, like sausages, I guess. Okay, like um, links. Like yeah, ca- yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. exactly. Got you. So he used to sell them around town mm-hmm. or or whatever, and then he made a, a band of champeta, which is the rhythm from the coast. It's kind of similar to reggaeton. Okay, uh, but it has a lot of African influences and sure. stuff. Uh, so we, uh, so we, uh, th- they would come rehearse at my aunt's house. Uh, and uh, and the the drums, bro. The drums were made out of like uh, it was like the X ray. You know how you get the X rays? Yeah. Like tightening it on some some I don't know what it was. <laughs> the 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 symbol was like this uh, on top of a uh, like you know those those uh, those trash. Oh, the trash yeah. Can, yeah 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 yeah. Like they would like flatten them and mm-hmm. making it like it was one of those things. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, and like I would play on that you know from time to time because I already knew how to play from from before. But uh, it was just like that's the kind of like. Um, stuff that I love, like yeah. the simplicity of things. The, sure. Uh, um, and then you know, so so yeah, that was a uh, uh, a lot of my childhood memories. And yeah. Um, even before that, when we moved to Bogota, I went to this conservatory, um, and uh, I was I went in playing piano, uh, and then with that, uh, the uh, the next year, um, they gave me a, a free scholar of a scholarship because I was, I was such a good player, or whatever. So I ended up not doing it anymore because uh, um, we had we were moving a lot, mm-hmm. right, with my with my dad, and and he's a musician as well. And just to kind of cut you off, yeah. I, your dad's pretty well known in Colombia, mm-hmm. right? As yeah. a, a singer performer, what was that experience like? You know, having a father that's relatively known in the country, and you're constantly traveling, or oh, that's you know Nando's kid, or yeah, what was that like? Uh, Normal. I mean, I mean, you, I mean, as a kid, you don't really notice, you know, anything other than that's just your dad, and you yeah. still go home and fight or like <laughs> argue or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it, he was a big influence in my life. My dad, mm-hmm. Nando Perez, um, and uh, yeah. So, so you know, he would. It, it's funny watching all the other performances of, on on VHS, whatever that is. <laughs> uh, and uh, it was just, it was just a fun. Um, fun thing to have them around and, and and that's how I got started in music they would always have rehearsals at the house um I would you know I was a crazy kid bro mm. like I was always like you know trying to see what was going on in the rehearsals getting in jumping on the drum set yeah and, and all that stuff so 
so it was cool having that influence definitely around yeah. me. Um, and then, so yeah, he's the way we uh, we relocated here. We travel a lot with uh, this cumbia band called uh, Sonora de Namita. Okay. Traveling all over uh, the U.S., Canada, Mexico, whatever, you know. And um, so yeah, so then you know we he was like, I'm mainly working here in the U.S. Let's you know move our stuff over there. We were mainly we we're supposed to move to Miami, but he changed his mind and moved us to LA. So. You think it's worked out best that you guys have ended up here in Cali? Versus- I love LA, bro. Yeah. I love LA. I, I would not leave it for anything. Um, even though Miami is just like a di- it's, Miami is Latin America, which sure. uh which yeah. I love that too, bro. It's uh it's it's a it's a really, really cool vibe out right. there. Right. Um but uh but yeah, I mean I love LA for sure. Yeah. Definitely. So you've been playing percussion, congas, timbales, all this stuff. Then you transitioned to drums, or was that something that came? No, I started with drums. Okay, I started with drums, and uh, I started percussion late, bro. Wow. Uh, yeah, I started. Um, I remember. I remember it was always there, but mm-hmm. I never really paid attention to it. I was always just playing drums. When I moved here, I was playing at church and 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 stuff like that. Um, just like about half of us start at church, um, and. Uh, well, yeah, most of today's pop drummers, for sure. I'd say like 85, 90% of drummers come from a church background. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was just, um, it was just gradually I started kind of going towards percussion just because it was always around me. But my first uh, instrument is, uh, and main is drums. For yeah. Sure. And what's your favorite style of music? I think I kind of know the answer, but. Bro, it depends, man. It <laughs> Country. depends. <laughs> Country. <laughs> it depends, bro. I, I, I love everything. Like, like honestly, I love everything. Obviously, like to me, like pop, funk, it's 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 uh it's there's nothing like it. Um, but obviously, like Latin music, it's like yeah. it it's That's your it's so vibrant. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's always there, and and um, it it just it just adds to um to everything when you know a little bit of everything. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Especially in LA, you have to. There's such a yeah, wide variety of uh, exactly. Yeah, so it's really important for sure. How do you think the collegiate experience with music, both doing Musicians Institute and, and CCM, it's not CCM, <laughs> CSCM, <laughs> uh, have helped you? What are some ways you think that going to school helped kind of pave some type of roads for you, mm-hmm. maybe that you know, you're working in now or you know, anything you could add to that? Uh, the first thing is uh, relationships. I've met a lot of people that are still... Um, uh, are connected with today mm-hmm. because of you know school um and also uh it's it's it gives you a leg up to be educated you know what i'm saying like uh learn how to read yeah. learn how to just 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 become a, a, a world random musician you yeah. know like you don't want to come to a an audition or a gig or something and and you are the odd man out because you don't know how to do one thing you know, obviously there's there's a lot of variations that come into play when you know you're hired for a job. Yeah, you know, the first thing is like most of the people I'm I'm pretty sure on this podcast have said is uh, it just be a chill dude, just yeah. be cool, bro. Just um, be a cool hang, you know. Be be mindful of others and and uh, obviously come prepared. Know this stuff. The the probably the top two important things. Yeah, and then you know it's just an added bonus when you know how to read, when you know how to you know just uh, appeal to the the musicality of a lot of us. Yeah. You know. I remember when we were taking the <laughs> the piano classes with Carlos. Mm-hmm. I think we jumped right in. You oh, said you, you grew up playing a little bit of piano? Yeah, I did. Because when I walked in there, man, and he's like, okay, play a C major <laughs> scale. And I'm like, what is that? Yeah. You know, well, did you already kind of know that? Or? I knew I knew my major scales. Okay. Like real good. Like the the um the the fingering and that and all that stuff. Yeah. But uh yeah, but I mean, when you jumped into Carlos' class, like you jumped in the deep end, bro. Like, <laughs> like remember us, bro? Like we would be in the uh, uh, in the rehearsal rooms and and just sweating, bro. Stressing it out. I mean, man. mainly because we used to procrastinate really bad, but uh, <laughs> but it was fun. It, it was, was it was fun, fun and, and I learned a lot. And uh, I just wish we could, you know, we could have continued kind of uh, going towards that path. But just you know, when you start working, it's just like you yeah, gotta, you know, pick and choose what you do. What experience did you have, if any at all, where you kind of were surprised by the magnitude of how serious music is to you? Like, for example, you walk into a gig and you didn't prepare as much as you, sh- you think you should have. Have you ever experienced that at all? Um, I try not to get to that point. Um, obviously, it has happened because there's, a, there's just 
you know, things that happen in the industry where you just can't control. Yeah. Um, but I try to prepare myself as much as I can, as best as I can to make sure that when a difficulty comes up, I guess, in whatever situation I'm in, I'm able to answer with it. You know, if I need to improvise or something, mm -hmm. you know, so be it. I could go back to this gig I did in um, in 2014 with like heavy hitters, bro. It's like Alberto yeah. playing percussion. I was playing uh, drum set. Harry Kim uh, on trumpet, George Shelby. So it's like the horn section from um, Phil Collins. Yeah. Uh, and it was like uh, Rike Pantoja. You remember him? Yep. yep. I mean, keyboard, right? Key yeah. And keys, uh -huh. yeah. And they, I think it was two keys that day. Um, and then it was, uh, and I was, I was young, bro. So then like, I, I would meet with the guitar player who would call me for the gig. Um, uh, David Martinez, who's an amazing person, amazing teacher, guitar player. And uh, we would like practice before the actual rehearsal because like he wanted me to become prepared. I was yeah. like the youngest one. And anyway, like I was just like from that rehearsal, I was so aware of like, I'm getting into it. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, right. like, you know, get your stuff together because it's, it's, you know, yeah. it's, it's nothing but not challenges, but you know, it's real now. It's business. You know what I'm yeah. It's, yeah, yeah exactly. it's business. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, obviously I took it serious. I learned the stuff and, and, and I mean, everybody was happy with it. And, and, and from that, it's just, you know, it's just a growing experience. Everything is just a growing experience, bro. Yeah. For sure. What qualities should a drummer have? A good drummer. Definitely become prepared. We're timekeepers of the band. You have to be best friends with the metronome, mm -hmm. first of all. Uh, and then after that, you know what I mean? Like, like play, play your part. You know, you know, I try not to, you know, get crazy. And, and, and when, it's, when it's asked to me, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I try my best to <laughs> yeah. do it. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think that's the, the, the best quality. That, I mean, timekeeping for sure. Um, and then, you know. Play the stuff you need to play at the right time. I think yeah. timing is everything when you're uh, when you're playing drums and and it, if, if it's Latin music or if it's uh, uh, pop, you know whatever it is, just yeah. play your part. Have musicality in the That's back right. of your mind. You know, as drummers, we think sometimes it's how many fills can we fit into one yeah. bar. You know, which is great if that's your solo section. Yeah. You know, but many times it's locking in with the bass. If you have multiple instruments, a horn section. You know, there's a lot of parts that compose a great song or good music, yeah. right? These experiences that you've gone through as a musician coming from Colombia to the U.S. and, you know, you've done the Emmys, the Latin AMAs. Do you think that that calling, the calling that you are fulfilling now as a musician is what you were created for? Uh, yes, definitely. But it took me a long time to realize that. When I was growing up, I, uh, I was really into, I still am, into sports. And I thought that was that might be a path that I want to. So my dad was always pushing me to uh, like, yo, music, like, you know, follow it. You know, it's mm. it's this is this is I knew it. You know, I knew I know this is for you. You know, God has a plan for you. Um, you have a great gift. You know, go with it. Um, and I would always fight him on it. I'm like, no, nah, man, I wanted to do sports. I want to do this and that. And I was I was I mean, sports was a huge, huge, huge blessing in my life because that translated into music hard work, you know, dedication, you know, waking up early, even though you have trials and tribulations, like, you know, in sports, when you have injuries, sometimes you have to play through them. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and music is the same, maybe not injuries more, more or less, but uh, we, I mean, we have a lot of, you know, things behind the scenes that people don't know about, right? Yeah. And we still have to deal with it and, yeah. and, and make sure we smile when the camera is on, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, uh, so yeah, I mean, it's it's it translated well into music, um, but when I uh, found out that music was for me, like I dove in head first because I knew that I lost a lot of time. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, like for instance, the way I went to MI was was pretty crazy because uh, I was going after I graduated high school. I went to uh, Glendale College for a little bit. Uh, and I was studying in history, which history is like one of your favorite subjects, bro. Yeah, I love history so much. People hate watching movies with me because all I want to <laughs> do is watch historical uh, <laughs> movies, you know, World War II stuff, and and I just love finding out about dates and 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 things that history might teach us. Yeah, you know, and and so so I went there and and I was miserable, bro. Like I didn't want to, I didn't want to, I didn't want to do it. I was like, I wasn't going to class. That's the reason why at Shepherd. I had to like do all those general ads because in school <laughs> I wasn't doing any of that, bro. So, uh, so I went to, um, so then I found out about MI online. Nobody told me about it. I just looked at it. I was like, I, I have to change my, my, 
my my the course of where I'm going. If I'm gonna do music, I'm gonna do it right and become yeah. educated and everything. So I researched and I saw the prize. I was like, oh my god, like, how is this gonna happen? You know. So I remember at the time, my siblings, um, I would take them to um, to school at 5 a.m. And it was a school in uh, near Hollywood. So right after I would drop them off at 5 a.m., I would drive to MI, park outside, and start praying. I'm like, God, I, I, you know, if if this is the path for me, show me that this is what you want. I mean, I'm gonna with with those prizes, bro. I was I was not gonna mess around, bro. I was going Man. in for blood, like yeah. I was gonna do it. And I did that, bro, for like a couple of months. Every single day, drop them at 5 a.m., drive to MI. 5 a.m., drive to MI. Uh, and then so it became a reality, you know, I was, I was able to go and I remember, um, I would have class from like 9am to about like 5.30pm. Um, I would get some food in between or whatever. And then I would study from, I would practice from 5.30 till, uh, 2am in the morning, every single wow. day, except for Sunday. Cause I was at church. Yeah. Um, every single day. And when we had like two, I'm a, I'm a night owl. So when we had like those two week breaks in between quarters, um, I would go to MI at like one in the morning and like leave at like seven or something. Man. Cause it was 24 hours. It was open yeah. all, you know, all day. So that's when I knew that, you know, if, if that's my calling, I'm going to go all in. That's yeah. good. Um, there's no, there's no safety net. Like you're either going to do this or you're going to do this. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, right. um, so yeah, that was, that's kind of when I knew that, you know, this is going to be for me. That's so, awesome, yeah. man. Oh, and then by the way, the timbal thing, it was there, but I wasn't really practicing or mm-hmm. whatever. So the stuff that I know is from like, like I started my when I was like 19 or so. Um, and so I went in um, and I would practice, I would start practicing timbal, watching videos, a lot of videos of Douglas and Luisito Quintero. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and just, you know, just the ones that have done it, like the way I want to do it, which yeah. is like pocket when you need to. And, uh, and when you, you, you have to go out, like, you know, you know, do it, but, but very musical. I mean, there's, n- not a lot of people ask music as Felicito, and I was just like, "Yeah, this is the guy I need to learn from." So, <laughs> um, so yeah, it was it was um, that's that's kind of when I so I started late with Timbales for sure. Yeah. Um, but uh, I I picked it up pretty pretty quickly because I would always listen to music. I would always have that around me. So. Yeah. Yeah. Difference between living your dream and achieving your goals. Oh man, I feel like I feel like goals. Um, are just like uh, like stepping stones, um, and and it doesn't necessarily mean that that's like oh I reached the goal like I'm just gonna stop there you know what I'm saying, mm. and in between that is when you live the dream like for instance going back to my grandma's small town, when you see uh, the type of lives that some people there live, and you go and you play at the Dolby Theater or you mm. play at um, any any venue literally any venue here. You know, no, no matter how big or small, you're like, man, I'm so blessed to do it. And yeah. it took me a while to understand that too. Like, because, you know, I mean, we're humans. So we we do take a lot of things for granted. Yeah. And it makes us like, for instance, during this pandemic, it's when you realized, wow, like, like mm. 2019 and 2018 and, and whatever before that, like we were living, we were like in the promised land, like that yeah, we we're man. doing it. When a lot of us are thinking during that time, um, like, I can't wait till next year to see what's like, enjoy it now. Like, that's the dream. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's the dream, at least for me. Yeah. And looking back at it, you know, I'm, 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 uh, I'm very happy to, uh, to have done a lot of the things that I have done, but I'm not done yet. And it doesn't yeah. mean I'm not happy with what I'm living with right yeah. now. So I think that's the difference. I think goals are a stepping stones to get to a better life. And when you get older, I, I, I see how, um, family, friends, over materialistic things are, That's are good. I mean, it's, it's More everything. Valuable. Oh, for yeah. sure. 100%. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Um, it's, it's things that cannot be replaced. Yeah. Cars, you know, everything that you could imagine that's, you know, material, like it's, Replaceable. you could get it back for sure. Yeah. And then when they go away, like you learn how to live without it. You know what I'm mm. saying? So, I mean, can you learn how to live without your family or mm. your friends or, you know, people that are close to you? You can't. Right. So, right. I think that's, uh, one of the most important things for sure. Given the state of affairs, where do you think the music industry is heading? That's a good question, bro. Um, not a lot of people could say that they know for sure. We could all, you know, try to guess where it's going. But I do think that recording is gonna is gonna, you know, be 
even a bigger thing than it was before. Mm-hmm. Because, just because everybody's doing it now. Yeah. I mean, you're doing it here. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, I'm doing it, you know, in my place more than I have done before. Yeah. Just because that's the new norm. So I feel like things will um, get better in that sense. But, you know, there's nothing like, I don't know how the whole touring thing is going to happen. People just don't feel comfortable around each other super close by. You know, I'm like, I did this gig where it's just like, you know, people in the cars. It was so weird, but... Oh, was I it mean, like a drive-in event? Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, gotcha. It um, so it's just like, you know, we can have that in like at the Rose Bowl or, or mm. you know what I'm saying, cars coming. I mean, it could. I mean, who knows? But mess up the grass. But, <laughs> but I mean, I don't know. It, it's just, it's just. I, I feel like, like, we're gonna do a lot of, um, a lot more uh, recording. I mean, and we're already doing at home stuff, but. I'm talking about in the sense of like, you know, having stuff come out and 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 people going out and getting a record, maybe like it used to be, you know what I'm saying? Mm, so that's good, man. Um, so I think everything will sort itself out. We just have to pretty much survive it, you know, yeah. as musicians. Yeah. Because a lot of us depend on I mean, a lot of us are freelancers. It's just reinventing ourselves for sure. And I've taken up songwriting too. Oh, nice. Yeah, I've taken up songwriting and uh it's just something that I've always read when I was a kid. Uh, and I stopped, you know, when I when I got a little bit older. But I, I think it's a it's a it's a nice aspect of really like putting yourself apart. Also, like I'm not just a drummer, but you know, I like to also you know tell my story or tell other people's story. Yeah. Um. And uh. And so yeah, I mean, it's just it's just about reinventing yourself at this time for yeah. sure for us. Yeah. Are there any other passions we don't know about, bro? I started cooking, man. I started cooking. You hit me up when you're telling me, hey, what kind of fish does ceviche yeah. have and all this yeah. stuff? Because I was trying to find something different. Because I know you have to use a white fish, first mm-hmm. of all, right? And I was using tilapia, but… Uh, Which is Peru, what I thought you yeah, needed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But in Peru, you use like soul fish or you use… Uh, I forgot the other name. I think here you call it flounder or something. Mm. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I, um, I'll, I'll give it to you, bro. Like Peruvian… I'll tell… Ta- I'll, I'll tell you my top say five. This, I'll say this in order and looking at the camera. Now I'm not going to do it because Kevin just asked me to do it. No, bro. I mean, Peruvian is, is, uh, is, is not a joke. Uh, I love I love Asian food, and yeah. I know that Peru has a lot of influence from, of course. from, from Asia. So Definitely. that mixture is just, it's just awesome. Yeah. Colombian cuisine is like, you know, it's, it's bomb too, but um, yeah. Thai food. I love Thai food. Thai food. So I've been, I've been, I've been, you know, tearing it up in the kitchen a little bit. I've been getting good compliments. So, um, you yeah. got a chef name at all? Um, nah, you put me on the spot, bro. <laughs> I don't. Hey, I you're don't. a musician, bro. You're, you're used to I this know, stuff. Right? So. Yeah, that's, that's actually, uh, Chef JD, yeah, JD Boy. <laughs> <laughs> you know where I'm going with that. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's good, man. That's good. Yeah. So, uh, by the way, for those that want to try a dope combination of Peruvian food, which we kind of discovered this. Yeah. You do arroz chafa de pollo, which is… No, chi- we did carne. Oh, carne. Yeah. Okay. Either combination of arroz chafa de pollo, which is chicken fried rice. It mm-hmm. has just, what, rice, ginger, uh, green onions. Egg. Egg. And then beef or chicken, mm-hmm. right? And then you have ceviche mixo, which has octopus, fish, shrimp, uh, sweet potato, lettuce. That big corn, what's that called? In Spanish, it's called choclo. Okay. In English, big corn. <laughs> yeah, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> and a lot of lemon juice. And Rococo. ají amarillo. Yeah. Ají amarillo yeah. is very good, mixed in with lemon. But anyway, yeah. that combination is amazing. I mm-hmm. don't know. We just, we had it one time when we went to that place in Glendale. Mamita, and it was, yeah. yeah, it was bomb. Yeah. It was bomb. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's they do it right. Yeah. I watch a lot of this guy named uh, Mark Wings. He's mm-hmm. like a like a food vlogger, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean he's he's uh, he doesn't cook though, which is weird. I don't think he does, but he explains the things so well that it's just like it, it's very attracting too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The viewer and the yeah. listener <laughs> for sure, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Well, JD, what does value mean to you, man? I feel like value has a lot to do with personal growth. Um, when you, obviously when you, when you're growing up, you're very unsure about yourself. You're very, you're trying to figure life out in general. Um, when you do though, uh, it's, it becomes clear to you who, uh, deserves you and who doesn't. Uh, for instance, um, in, in, in music, there's, there's people who, uh, like to undervalue a lot of what Mm -hmm. you do. Uh, and, uh, 
And it's, it's unless you know who you are as a person, that's when um, you're able to use the word no. And, and mm. I think that's one of the most important words in, in business. Even though, yeah, I mean, you might lose an opportunity, you might lose some money, but you gain something. You gain experience, you gain, um, uh, you gain self-love. And I think that's very, very important in this industry where they tear you down as much as they lift you up. So you have to balance it up. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think I think when you when you know who you are, you know what you're about. Um, that's when uh, people are able to see you know your worth for sure. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's not even talking about money. It's not talking. I'm not talking about um, uh, work or anything like that. It's just it's just about um, you as a person. And, and I wish that people could understand that the most important thing is caring about just one another. And people will see that and people will, you know, automatically become attracted to you, you know, in a sense of, you know, like there's something about Kevin that is just like, like, you know, he's just a cool dude. So I'm, I'm just going to freaking hire him. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> it's just, it, it just because you, you just give out that, you know. Yeah, and it's like a personal aroma of some sort, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. I believe in God. So I believe that his grace and goodness really does follow you everywhere you go. And yeah. when it does, people, you know, feed off of it. I mean, some people might call it aura or, you know, whatever you want to call it but there's something there you yeah. know what i'm saying so um so i mean the the value you put on yourself is the value that you know others will perceive you as so attaching to that last set of statements that you were talking about your relationship with the lord yeah how important has that been in your journey faith in god is the thing that keeps you grounded when you want to do things that are not of the world i yeah. guess you would say yeah. or of the world yeah. sorry yeah um so i i think that um and obviously everybody you know has moments of weakness and and all you have to do is just pretty much find God and I deal with that every day you know sometimes I you know struggle to like forget to pray or something and it, it's not you know and and it, it helps to have people around you that have that uh same mentality as you yeah you know what I'm saying yeah uh, because you can keep each other accountable you right know? like you know it's 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 hard for me to come out and and ask a person like yo like I'm struggling with this can you help me out but but if somebody comes to me I'm like yo like like I'm dealing with the same thing too. So let's feed that's off of each other yeah. and and just grow. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So that's good, man. Um, so thankfully I had a very good example um of uh of my parents, my dad, who was, you know, in 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 the business for such a long time, but you know, you you he is the most, you know, down to earth, charismatic, yeah. and uh and 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 he's he loves God so much. It's just like it's it's very good to see that, you know, you could make it in this business and uh and not lose yourself. That's good, yeah, man. For sure. That's important for believers, yeah. I think, more than anything. Not just artists, because a lot of people just say it's just artists and they lose themselves. And, you know, we hear about some singers that grew up Christian and then they just kind of departed from the faith. But equally, it applies to musicians that we're all exposed to the same things, mm -hmm. you know, especially if we're playing for mainstream artists or whatever the case is, you know, it's, it's important to be rooted. And that consistently calls on us to just be disciplined enough to know what we say yes and what we say no to yeah. because we struggle with our own things. Exactly. You know, so, yeah. well, JD, where can people find you? Social medias, man. Oh, man. Bro, I'm horrible with social media. <laughs> like, for real. Like, I didn't, I didn't grow up with it. So, like, it's, 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 uh, so you can find me on, uh, on MySpace. <laughs> Tom. Yeah. <laughs> um, Instagram, uh, Facebook. Uh, I'm trying to get more active on YouTube. Yeah, uh, that's good, man. Yeah, but uh, well, what, I mean, what's where it. do they search you? On Instagram is JD underscore Perez with two Z's. Okay. Uh, on Facebook, just JD Perez. I'm pretty sure we yeah. all have a bunch of friends in common, so <laughs> yeah. we'll fight each other. Uh, and then uh, and then YouTube JD Perez as well. Okay, yeah, cool. Just like that. Nice, man. Well, this is episode 31 with JD Perez. Three what? The homie, man. It's, I can't believe it's been six years we've known each I other, know. man. It's been yeah. a, a ride, and he's always been down to earth, and, and just uh, we've done a lot of things together, man, believe it or not. We yeah. have. The whole collegiate experience was a lot of fun having JD. We were like the dynamic duo, they called us. Or, yeah. <laughs> we're always <laughs> hanging out and, and going to the mall. You like see every day, yeah, at the Glendo <laughs> Galleria. We should be studying our soul, uh, what not soul, soul fish, yeah, soul fish, yeah. yeah, musicianship. Yeah. And we're over at the mall eating candy, and yeah, yeah. you were, I, <laughs> I was it. I the was sweet it. factory, man. They closed it down, I think. They did. I don't think they, it's there yeah, anymore. Yeah, it's very unfortunate. Um, yeah, that was uh, that was a lot of fun, for yeah, sure. A lot of fun, good and, times, uh, man. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming through, man. This is episode pleasure. 31 with JD Perez. We'll see you guys on the next one.